music-wise, um, my favorite of the Sailor Moon music, it comes from the musicals, but the German Sailor Moon in the dub just hits differently. It's all like techno music. It's awesome. Uh, for example, um, here's one of the theme songs. invite, first of all, my co-MC, Emily, to the stage. She is with Pretty Heroes, and they have a booth over, actually, in the artist alley there, too, so. Hello, Emily, how are you today? Alright. And I'd also like to invite to the stage our special guest, who are covertly amongst you guys right now, believe it or not. So I'd like you to give a big round of applause to Mr. Toby Proctor and Jill Frappy. Please come to the stage. sit in the middle here. So I don't know how much of that you guys were actually able to see because it was washed. You watched it all. You watched it all, okay. Did you get to see things in the back? Did it look okay? Yeah, it looked great. Okay, awesome. What did you think of like the, the live action and the musicals and stuff? Uh, you know what, that was the first time I saw that version, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It was, I just wish I could have done the transformation. There, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you I'm go. quite flexible. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if they ever decide to do an English dub of the live action, like it was 2003, 2004, but I mean, they have brought stuff back, would you want to voice Tuxedo Mask? Oh, yeah. Would you come back as Luna? Meow. Yeah. Awesome. Well, no, I'm, well, it's really weird being old. Uh, you know, realizing I was playing old for 25 years ago, and now I'm there. <laughs> so I'm That's okay. We're you're you're never never old. I I, I refuse to grow up. Honestly, I'm I'm 40 wow, now, but I, I don't. I'm still like eight in my head. So you know, it is what it is. But this is amazing to be on stage with you guys. Like, you guys were idols of mine of growing up watching Sailor Moon. I loved it. I'm sure Emily was the same for you, probably. And yeah, yeah. I first uh, started watching it at 13 years old, so uh, that might uh, give away my age. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my, my little sister was, was watching it. She's about four years younger than me, and, uh, and she was just watching it on YTV. And I was like, what are you watching? And she's like, it's, it's Sailor Moon. Shut up and just watch it. Uh, and, uh, and it just kind of led to everything else. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I know. How do you guys feel? Uh, it's been over 30 years now since the, uh, the series came out. <laughs> well, okay. It feel so that long. I was... Uh, so, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I remember um, my son, Jamie, was about 10. And he's 37 now. That's when I realized how long ago it was. And we were on live TV on the zone, being interviewed. And after take him back to summer camp and he said, I don't care if I die tomorrow. I said, why? He said, I've been on the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys interviewed by PJ Phil? Or was it Sugar or You know, I, I wasn't but he's a good friend of mine and I've met him through the years and like we've we've traveled together doing doing some of these events and stuff. He is probably one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet. If you get the chance to meet him, he is, he, he gets me all the time. Awesome. Oh, yeah, I get to interview him next, actually. Oh, do you really? Yeah, he's yeah, a long way up, you guys. So, yeah, it's like a day of nostalgia, like I said, so it's pretty interesting. Well, to answer your question, just just a little bit, going back very quickly, when, when we first got this show, 
Uh, I was 19, so I was a bit younger, a bit uh, more handsome, uh, taller perhaps. Uh, and uh, it was a really interesting thing because none of us, when we auditioned for this, uh, knew what Sailor Moon was. Uh, especially me, I, I, I actually replaced uh, Reno Romano. He did the, I think, the first 10 episodes, and then he had to do something else, so they needed uh, from uh, episode 11 on. And um, I didn't know anything about Sailor Moon. I didn't even know anything about Tuxedo Mask. All they did was they put a piece of paper in front of me, and they gave me kind of a soundbite of Reno saying something. And they said, we don't need you to be a voice match, but just to kind of match the energy. I'm like, okay, and I've never done voice work before. I've been an actor for many years. No, it was my first voice gig. But I've done, I've done, I've been in the business, but just not voice specifically. And um, I gave it a shot, and I, I, I kind of walked away, thinking, well, that was interesting, whatever. And then uh, my agent uh, back in the day, this is going to age me. My agent paged me, so I got my page. I'm like, oh, okay. So quickly to the phone booth I went, and uh, I called my agent. Said, yeah, what's up? They said, hey. Congratulations, you just got Sailor Moon. I'm like, that's amazing, what's Sailor Moon? And uh, they said, no, the thing that you just auditioned for. I'm like, okay, I, again, I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything. It was just, it was something, right? And then cut to a week later, we go to McClear Path A Studios, which is Mutual Street and near Jarvis in Toronto, walk in, and I'm like all nervous, because never done a voice job. And uh, they say, hey, congratulations, Sailor Moon. I'm like, yeah, I still don't know. Uh, and then they, they slid my character to me. Tuxedo mask, and it was the first time I saw him. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Tall, dark, and handsome. I like it. There you go. So that was that was my first uh, foray into Sailor Moon and knowing what it was. Wonderful. Yeah. So. They told me I was sort of Queen Victoria and Yoda and I'm too deep. Uh, somewhere around there. Um, and I remember I auditioned to be the teacher. Just practicing. This was before I actually recorded, and I heard one of the ladies from LA say, "Too old," and so they didn't even let me audition. And then around midnight, I get this call saying, "Could you come back to the studio? We'd like you to try for somebody else." And that's when I found out about being Victorian and all yeah. the stuff. And I was so happy to be a cat because I'm a total cat person. And I love also watching when um, Luna would get into trouble or be squished or whatever. Um, we do this, uh, the, the, the writing goes across the screen. And we it's like to, professional karaoke. Is yeah, and, it is. And, and, um, but once you get that sort of thing, you just put that away and you just, you just become the cat in the situation. And, and then make the, the weird and wonderful noises. But um, it was a riot. I loved doing it. Um, and I, I, I don't mind being a superannuated cat if they want me to do it again. I can even do it on crutches. You know, I don't mind. I love, I, I love the whole feline thing. Yeah. Um, and I met people very young. I wasn't sure. Well, I'm still young, Joe. You know. That's how it works. <laughs> you know, the weirdest thing is when I go for an audition for a commercial, and he's casting. He just feels very odd. I'm Toby, give me the part. <laughs> <laughs> Got the connections, right? Right. So, so I have to ask, how did it feel for you going in? So, I've heard this from um, Vincent Perez. I've heard it from Ron Rubin as well too. Going from in like yeah, like '90s, '80s and stuff, watching cartoons like that, where it's mostly male leads, and now you're on a show. I, again, this was your first your first voice acting thing, but kind of the the. Guy is the secondary character to the female heroes. Like, how, how did that feel? Uh, Honestly, you know, I, I, I loved, I loved the idea of it because, first of all, I have daughters, so I think that's very good. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't really aware of it to, to be honest, because uh, I mean, tuxedo mask. I, I would just kind of slide in and slide out. I didn't do very much. Uh, I, I imagine I was just busy cultivating roses somewhere else. That, that's that's my excuse. Uh, but I, yeah, you know, I, I think it's such a it's an important show, uh, and and I I hope that there's more of that. Um, but yeah, you know, when we used to do like af after getting Sailor Moon and I started doing other voices, I did notice when we go in for casting, there was very little female roles. There would be like five male you know leads, and then there'd be the one or the child that we played by the. The one of it. Well, that's that's definitely what you experienced. Yes. 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 Um, sorry, I was just remembering when I had a baby. I mean, when I had Diana. And 
we were not told very much before we recorded, and we were not given the script. So you just see this writing on the screen, and it was written by one of the producers, and I could never understand her writing. So, oh, I think you should... Anyway, um, so I go in one day, and they said, oh, by the way, you've got a, a, a kid. And I said, well, who did I have it with? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't have you to give me a chance to prepare. Was it with that scoundrel that was chasing me? They said, no, Artemis. I said, Artemis? I don't have those sorts of feelings about Artemis at all. Anyway. Um, the, so it would have been an immaculate kittenception? Absolutely immaculate kittenception. Plus kittens from the future. And then and Diana had such a sweet little word. And I said, and they said, well, actually, she's in the waiting room if you want to say hi to her. So I said, oh, I, hi. And I love your voice. And she said, thank you. And I realized that was my natural voice. <laughs> You're talking about sugar? Yes. Yeah. Which is fabulous, but I had no idea. No, Lorena was, uh, oh, was, was Diana. Yeah, yeah sugar was, was Rini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, yes, I agree. But still, I just write like that. Yeah. But I love the idea about girls being leaders. At that point, as you were saying, uh, women were pulleys. They were just pulled by the hero, you know, wherever the hero was going. And I also like the fact that uh, Serena had so many weaknesses that be, that we take my strengths, but I, I really like that too. I, I hate perfect people, they're so boring. And um, anyway, yes. But I guess you don't like Jared, you know. I, I know. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of character development and, and personal growth that I think a lot of the characters yes. see over time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean that we can all be heroes in specific situations. Um, it's not my shirt says everyone can be a hero. <laughs> exactly. Available over there. The Which is available for purchase if we go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it in there, right? So much. Shameless, it. shameless plug in. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I have a fun little story. I was so honored to be part of this. Um, Toby came to Anime Revolution last year, and we also happened to have Toto Furuya there. And it was, as you said, it was on your bucket list because they never met before. So the Japanese tuxedo mask meeting the English tuxedo mask. And it was awesome, an awesome moment backstage just to be a part of that. That was awesome. So. Yeah, that was pretty cool because we had for many years said it would be really neat to get the Japanese cast and the Canadian cast together. Uh, and obviously it just it didn't, it wasn't uh, in, in the cars. And then last summer in July, uh, it was such an interesting experience because you can, it's cool. Because, it, I mean, He's the original, and uh, it was very neat to be a part of and be on that stage. It was a great panel too, and you did a great job. Oh, it. thank you. Yeah. It was it was interesting because it was all all guys on the panel uh, talking about a Sailor Moon show. So, but I like that that uh, idea of it too. It's completely different. I know it was weird a little bit, but um, yeah. Cause we, anyway, I thought it was a lot of fun. But, yeah. Might have been more. Invi sorry? It might be more fun if I was there. Oh, of course it would be more fun with you. Of course. I would love to have the whole cast if I was if I was able to do that. But you should just get a teacher's place and you know, got Jill. Right? <laughs> <laughs> can help you make that for next time. Yeah, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, this is awesome. Now, Jill, you made it through all, the, all four seasons uh, in the original English dub. Yes, yes. Yeah. It was always me. Yeah, yeah so, you were one of the very few. Yes, actually, because there the were four run. Sailor Moons. Susan and yourself made it all the way through Susan, completely. Yeah. Kate, 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 I know Katie, Katie was so young when she... Katie missed 13 episodes uh, yeah. because uh, Emily, Emily Barlow. Barlow took over for her oh, and then she came back okay. as Venus. Yeah. And then Ron Rubin, who was yes. there for the yeah. whole thing too. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there, there were a lot of changes and stuff over the, the years. Um, I, I wanted to do it. I wanted to do the whole. And in fact, I was supposed to do the whole series. Uh, it just so happened that just before the third uh, uh, season, I ended up getting cast in a show called Police Academy of the Series. Okay. That was a live action. It was 26 one hours, recording in Vancouver, Canada. And I, the, the Sailor Moon production, they couldn't um, accommodate me uh, flying back and forth. And uh, Warner Brothers at the same time, they couldn't do it. And I, I even said, like, I'd do an ISDM patch where you can do it by telephone. You can, like, back in the day, you, the quality was good enough that you could voice something over the phone lines, technically. And I really wanted to do it, but they just, they couldn't, because it was, uh, uh, 
rhythm band and and the way we recorded. Uh, I, I could, it was dubbing. You can't. It was a little harder to do, and so they had to replace me, which really it sucked. It was hard because I, I had two you know good seasons of tuxedo mask, and he's definitely been a huge part of my life. And I would have loved to carry it the, the whole way through, but sometimes uh, things just don't work out. Fair enough. Yeah. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think of seeing Luna on the last little bit there? Uh, she became a human and transformed in as Sailor Luna in the live yes, action. Well, that was one of my favorite bits. <laughs> because, well, for a start, I think that the way um, the anime just, I, I just mean, she just, or I, just spoke so pathetic but, but, but in the sweetest way, like tragic. That I, I, I love this student so much. And then, of course, I turned into the best sort of sailor girl. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I have the oh, yes, longest yes. legs and definitely the longest hair. And I think they should have just kept me on as long as. Anyway, there you go. Sailor Luna. <laughs> yeah, 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 Sailor Luna. Yeah. Do you remember dubbing uh, the movies, the three movies that they did? Well, that was one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. Snow Queen one. They actually, uh, I'll show you this here, they turned it into a musical as well. Oh. So they have, uh, there we go, so they had a, a girl playing Luna, the cat there, and then she turns into... into yes, yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but it's... Yeah. It's, it <laughs> the was, only problem was that she's wearing a yellow dress, and it's just kind of a yellow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, but, but it just won. I would have chosen that story. Yeah. Well, yeah, and a lot of the, the art, she's kind of more purplish, yes, too, as a cat. Exactly. It, sorry, exactly. <laughs> Visually, that's, yes. That's adorable, by the way. I know some, uh, uh, Matthew gave this to me, yes. Awesome. Well, um, actually, in, in the further uh, part of Sailor Moon, uh, late, the later seasons, um, especially in the newer uh, one that they've been making, Luna is a human fairly regularly. Artemis becomes a human, and Diana becomes a human, too. They have their human forms, because they're from another planet as well, too. So it's, it, there's a lot of lore involved with it as well, too. So if you ever get the chance... I feel like from another planet. Me, too, honestly. I think we all do a little bit, you know? And I think that's what kind of um, draws people to this, this series as well, too. It, it, it's, all of us who feel a little bit different, you know, it, it's, we all have this one connection through this show. And I, I, that's for me, and I, I love it. Best. See, I wish Tuxedo Mask transformed into a cat. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's the opposite right there, way. right? Yeah. Tuxedo Mask Cat. Follow the litter trail, you'll find his roses. Tuxedo Cat. Actually, there's some, someone that makes plushies, and it's a Tuxedo Cat. So we'll have to find one of those for you, maybe. I like that a lot. <laughs> Awesome. Did you have any questions for them? Uh, yeah, um, I'd love to know what, what was your favorite part of, of being in Sailor Moon? That's a tough one. Well, I mean, these kind of things are kind of a favorite for me because you have to realize when we recorded the show, where I was alone at least. I know there's a few characters. I know uh, uh, Sailor Moon and Sailor Mars sometimes would record together, but for the most part, did you, you record it singly? Singly, yes. yes. Yeah. And that's very odd for actors because we believe in action reaction, or it's like you know, ping pong or something. You hit the ball and they hit the back. Well, if you don't know how the other person's presenting their lines to you, you have to imagine and, and react. Um, and so I've got to know the others since we've been going to comedy yes. clubs. Um, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't really cross paths. Yeah, for the most part, we would see each other in the hallways and say, hey, hi, and then that was kind of it. So for me, it was a weird thing because it was, uh, uh, I think it was, yeah, just after the series went on air on YTV, I was on the streetcar, Carlton and Young, I'll never forget it, and I saw this little kid walk up the, the uh, stairs and he turned around and he had a, a tuxedo mask backpack, and I was like, what the heck is that? That is so cool, so I called my brother, Mike Kelly, Something is up. He's like, what is it? I said, I saw my character on a backpack. He goes, oh, that's cool. Like, was it like drawn? Like, no, no, no. This was the real deal, man. I said, there's a tuxedo mask backpack. So I was all excited. And uh, I got home. And then shortly after that, that's when I started to realize, like, this is a real show. Like, I, I didn't know what it was. So that was kind of cool. So yeah, I think it's the fact that we get to connect with people who have been able to see this show and love it so much for so many years and it means so many different things. Like I've met people, I, I met uh, kids who are eight years old and I've since met them now uh, toasting their wedding nuptials. Wow. So it's like, that's so full circle. It also makes me sound 400 years old, but that's 
that's okay. I understand that. Yeah. I've, I've been working at a fun center for 18 years, as of Friday, actually. Um, and I've, I, the other day, a gentleman came in with his kids for their birthday, and I served him for his party when he was eight. So it's like, it, I totally understand that feeling of like, oh my gosh, like, you feel old, but at the same time, you don't feel old. Like, I don't know. I don't think our minds ever really change that much. You know, we're always going to be children, but... You know, I, again, I, when we were recording and I had a great time, but it was the time at a Q&A when somebody said, you voiced my childhood, that I just began to get it. And how this show is important to me because it's so often you don't know when you're in the middle of something you, you don't realize its effect and I think something was said earlier one of the things also about Sailor Moon is teamwork is working with each other and the power of a group of people working together in this case ladies um, uh, but uh, and I like the fact the person who said you voiced my childhood was male actually so it's 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 Lots of, uh, See, I got you ruined my childhood, and yeah. uh, it's okay. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Mike, is uh, Tuxedo Mask really his biggest power is the power of distraction? Is that, is that it? Yeah, so just not being there at all. Yes. <laughs> he just shows up and he's like, hi! I still okay, think was, now you do something. <laughs> I've seen some pretty funny fan, fan fiction ones, too, that are they're pretty great. But yeah, it's, it, was, it was neat. You know, sometimes we're walking through conventions. I was with my son, Sammy, and he's like, how can I never see anything with the tuxedo mask? Like, me too, buddy. I don't know. I don't know what's up here. Get it together. No. So, but every once in a while, we get to see some neat stuff. Of course. And, you know, I don't know why they didn't put it into the original anime series, but he does have a power. Yes. Aside from the roses, it's tuxedo less smoking bomber, but he never gets to use it. You never got to say it. He doesn't get to use it in the anime, though I always ask every tuxedo mask yes. actor to do their own take I was on just that say. because all of the women get to go and say their power, so... <laughs> Oh, what is my power? Yes. So, uh, well, I guess it's, it's Tuxedo the Smoking Bomber! There you go. Bomber, yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, Meatballhead, what are you doing here? I thought for sure you'd be over there with your friends, especially since they're acting like total fools. <laughs> oh. Oh, Tuxedo Mask. Stop it. <laughs> I love and it. stop littering the place with your roses. <laughs> I have to clean them all up. Yeah, I guess who does actually clean them up for them? I guess they, they just sit there and they go organic. They go away. And I guess that's true. Yeah, very good person. Yeah, in, in one of the later seasons, he admits that he has a friend who is a botanist uh, who works with roses. That's and I'm true. like, ah, that's where they come from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's where he is part time. You know, he's yeah. helping his botanist friend with it. Exactly. exactly. On top of his university studies and all that stuff too. So. <laughs> and, and and ironing and pleating those pants. I, yeah, of course, of course. You gotta get those green pleats going. Yeah. So, yes. And searching for the silver crystal and all that stuff too. So. Well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> but pants first. Yes, of course, of course. You gotta look. You gotta look spiffy, right? So. Yes. Awesome. Well, I think we should open up the floor. To, uh, if you guys have some questions for the for our guests, if you'd like to come up to the middle over here, I'm going to bring my microphone down, and uh, if you guys are okay answering a few questions, yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. Anybody have any questions? Come on down, or not? <laughs> one at a time, guys. Order one at a time. One at a time. We got the we got the shy crowd here today. Apparently. Yeah, that's okay. We can keep going. No worries. If you think of something and you want to you want to ask. Feel free to come on up and I'll, I'll come over with the microphone, so... Right. so uh, I, I, I can ask a question. Yeah. Um, if there was something that you could change about your character or something that you would you like to see them have the opportunity to do, what would that be? Well, I would like to have had a romantic supper with Artemis. <laughs> As I said, it was all such a shock. Just a I sweet was, can of wet food? I mean, there was no courting whatsoever. I think he's... He's just eyeing her from a distance. No, he's quite cold. I mean, what was the guy's name? Um, that, that uh, not Tarzan. Uh, um, the, the wonderful who? Conan. No, the guy that chased me a lot. Oh, uh, Hercules. 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 Yeah. Now he was. <laughs> I would but, love to. But Luna didn't seem. Luna didn't seem to be a fan of him. I liked him because he's been a bit buff stuff. <laughs> so also. How, how would you want Artemis to romance? To, to like, the, the, uh, the oh, date? Oh, I've gone off Artemis' boy. What? <laughs> no, he's not. 
No, he's not. No, he's not. I love him. He's gorgeous. He'd have been cold. Um, well, Luna did have that infatuation with Kakeru in the movie as well. Exactly. Yeah. So I know. <laughs> and and, and it's in her star. She, she's got quite the crush on the outer. Yes, yes, she did. And uh, uh, takes a bath with him, which is... Hmm. I'll show you. I'll show you oh, I didn't about. know about that. <laughs> Actually, what is your favorite line from the show? Did you have a favorite... Oh, I, uh, I mean, it was more like sort of complaining than else, you know, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Not, not really like a, a specific catchphrase. No, I don't know. No. If, if Luna had a, you know, a power, then what do you think it would be? Well, I don't know how the universe would start, but um, a power. sees herself as more important than she was. I think I was basically in charge. It should have been it should have been accepted that I was I mean I don't know what the heck Artemis was doing frankly. I think Luna well actually I I really think the series should have changed its name as well. Anyway, whatever. Um, Say Luna. I, yes, I think <laughs> I think Luna was a queen of some some point. I mean I think she had a big ego, but uh, yeah. well, I, I think she was trying really hard to to guide this very reluctant hero. Exactly, right? trying to guide her, and, but at the same time loving her. Yes. But oh gosh, you know she's okay. You know, but um, <laughs> well, those were teenagers. Well, no, absolutely. How do you deal with a teenager? That's the thing. You can't keep on complaining. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we have a question for you. Okay. First of all, it's nice to see you two once again. Because I have encountered you guys before in previous conventions. Now, uh, if given the opportunity, would you ha ever hang out with Tuxedo Mask and Luna if they were real life? I would, because first of all, uh, cats are cool, and uh, guys in tuxedos attract really uh, rich uh, people. So that's cool. I I'd like to hang out with those people. Well, I it too because it means I could wear some really lovely clothes because if the guy's wearing you know, the only thing is we'd have to always carry a lint roller around oh, no, for then, Luna, then right? Yeah, if you got a black hat and a black tuxedo, I'm not she's saying you're hairy, Joe. No. I'm just saying <laughs> your character name. I, don't know. Um, I, uh, I did have a black hat at one point actually, called Marie. I know she shouldn't be called Luna. But she's um, yeah, I don't know. Any, any cat is a friend of mine. And as I said, somebody wearing a tuxedo and looking sleek See? would be perfect. Told you. We don't dress up enough, do we? I love dressing up. I mean, how often can you... I mean, well, there's a handsome man in a guys, top hat over I there. I don't know if you up. noticed, Jill. No, I have. But I just mean, I love the way people are dressed up. Because otherwise there's no, there's no opportunity. Is there? There's no special occasions anymore. You see people on a talk show. I would kind of Stuff. They come on in jeans and a t-shirt. I think, oh, come on. I'm immediately regretting what I'm wearing, Jill. Where is that? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Jeans and a t-shirt. Thank you. Good night. Jeans <laughs> and a t-shirt. Which can, of course, be very sexy. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And by the way, you have somebody over there who looks exactly like you. I know. Hello. <laughs> I see me everywhere. No, it's not <laughs> No, I would love them. Yes. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. I already met you like a bunch of times, especially at the Comic Con last year. I met at Fan Expo and Anime North and all that stuff. It was so good to see you guys you again. Well, I never met her, but it was nice to meet you again. Same here. Well, anyways, how, what is your favorite kind of music you guys to listen to and why? What is your favorite music to listen to? The kind of music. The kind of music. Cool. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I love a lot of styles of music. I like I like a lot of electronic. However, uh, my uh, I just recently got gifted a cello because I used to play it when I was uh, in grade five. So I've been relearning the cello. Let me tell you something. I'm awful, but I love it, and it's it kills my kids when I play. But um, I really love I love classical music. And uh, it really depends. If I really want to uh, get into like some road rage, I listen to uh, like metal. But if I want to chill out on the streets, a little bit of classical, and you're safe. Uh, I, th I think I have wide, wide range. What about you, Joe? What music? What music does Luna listen to? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, actually, you mentioned the cello. 
Yes. Uh, it does great things to me. I mean, we're wonderful things. I just, I love the sound of each other. Uh, I just, it's like a soul talking. And, and so I've always, yeah, my classical music that has cello in it, I love. I Mine is more like a cow talking to you when I play it. I, so I don't talk so, to cows anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, when it's not there yet. Yeah. Uh, I might turn off the monitor a little bit so we might be able to talk. I like this. Why? the piece I like that. that woman who sang that thing about um, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys. Okay. Ruby something. I'm not very good remembering who sung what. Also, aren't you a huge hip hop fan? Oh sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I remember. <laughs> she throws down. I'm, oh, I'm gosh, sorry, I'm man. just feeling really ignorant today. It's okay, no worries. We could have a ta ta. Yeah. Uh, very nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And what if Tuxedo Mask is in Persona? It's Joker from Persona. Oh, interesting. That would be kind of a cool mashup. Interesting. Tuxedo Mask. I like it. I'd like to, I'd like to see that, that artwork for sure. Oh, yes. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Take care. Bye. Good to see you again. She looks so familiar. I know. Extremely so. <laughs> You've got one of the shoulder ones. I love the shoulder ones. I've got a shoulder one. Yeah. Would you guys ever cosplay as your characters at a convention? Would we ever cosplay our characters at a convention? Have you ever cosplayed? I've never cosplayed. I think it'd be great fun. I have once. Uh, oh. Not at a convention, but it was for a fan fiction, and it oh, was... Oh yes, you were in fan fiction the it, show! Yes, that's right. I, that. I was asked to do a fan fiction reading uh, by a guy named Adam Ward and Mark Atoya. They put this thing together uh, it was a few years back, and they said, would you come and do this thing? And I, at first, I didn't even know what they were talking about. I'm like, I, I don't know, maybe, whatever. And they said, it's, it's kind of, it's a real twist on the story. I'm like, okay. So, um, I did that. Apparently, my character ended up falling in love with Sailor Moon's dad. Uh, that's where it ended up, which was interesting and cool. I mean, but I did, I, yeah, yeah. I did get to wear the top hat and cape, and it was, uh, it, it was fairly uh, enlightening. Yeah, I would do it. I would. I would. I think it'd be kind of fun. I just, uh, it's kind of yeah. an easy cosplay. It's just a tuxedo, a yeah. cape, and a mask. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love that he's a summer... I, there's a, there's a stand-up comedian in town, Pat Thornton, one of the funniest guys, and he, yeah, one of his, he was doing like a 24-hour joke-a-thon thing where he was just like... He had, to, he had to tell jokes for 24 hours straight, and one of his jokes was, I love the character of Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon. He's just a summary of what he's wearing. I'm like, that is exactly true. <laughs> well, the nice thing is, is the costume doubles as three different cosplays because you need tuxedo mask, a vampire, or a magician. Right? I like that. Well, what would you suggest for Luna then? Oh no. Um, there's there's yeah. different ways. I mean obviously we've got the very comfortable Kigurumi version. I know. <laughs> wow, that's a crazy tattoo by the way. I just Oh that. yeah, I have um Ooh, like, yes. two of my tattoos are Dragon Ball, the rest are all Sailor Moon. Unbelievable. I have uh, Luna and Diana on my leg. I have Luna and Artemis and Sailor Moon on my leg. Um, for Luna and her locket and Sailor Moon. So cool. Thank you. Yeah. Your body tells a story. You could yes. just do cat ears and then just draw soul and purple if you wanted to. Well, yeah, but I think I'd, I'd have a good, good girl as well. I think I'd have yeah. really nice silk stockings. All right. All right. But I'd have the cat ears. <laughs> <laughs> Jill. I gotta stop snorting. I know, is it terrible? <laughs> no, no, it's great. <laughs> Hi! Uh, if you guys could hang out with any of the Sailor Scouts, which one would you hang out with? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna get in trouble. Sailor Mars. Right? <laughs> the ex-girlfriend. That's right. Right? <laughs> Probably Sailor Jupiter. Sailor Jupiter. Yeah, like you that. too? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Plus, I really like Susan. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Susan was one of my students in Montreal. No way. Yeah. I taught Susan. And, and so she can thank you for this. Yeah. But no, but also she directed me um, in a a show called uh, Animal Shelf, and I played a little pink teddy bear. And the funny thing was. We stop every so often. We just say, it's "So cute! I know it's cute. Oh, wait, I'm it." And then I have to, you know, 
Suzuki, the teddy bear. Who would you hang out with? Yeah. 100, 100%. Susan Jupiter, she's my favorite. I think she's so cool. Susan Jupiter. I agree. Right. Right. We'll have to tell Susan. She'll, she'll yeah, like Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Next question. Okay. Um, if at all, and notwithstanding in Joe's case that Luna is a cat, how would respectively tuxedo mask and Luna take her coffee? How would we take our coffee? Is that what you said? In character, oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. Like, yeah. In character, how would you take coffee? Well, I don't know about you, Tuxedo Mask, but I would like a lot of milk in mine. Actually, I'd like a lot of milk in I think it's going to be just like me, tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> the character, not me. Yes. Just glamour. Yeah. <laughs> the very first signing we ever did at the University of Ottawa, and yes. Like, and we had all these people in the audience and everybody was being very formal about everything and then suddenly somebody stood up, a young lady, and she said, Taxi no mask. can I give you a kiss? Everybody started coming up. Okay, I'm gonna start blushing now, and I'm gonna get under the table. Come on. No, really, get in trouble. It's just so funny because. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, the term husbando. No. Uh, so husbando and and waifu are, are terms that have really been more popularized in, in recent years, but Tuxedo Mask is kind of one of the original husbandos. Uh, so it's it's the kind of character uh, that people want to be with romantically and just have like a fantasy relationship with. Gotcha. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna go below the table and just blush, blush, blush. It's just the character, I get it, but yeah. It's still kind of neat though. Yeah. Who played Hercules by the way? I don't remember. I don't remember the voice. <laughs> hey. Hi there. Hello. Uh, uh, first, I just want to say, can you have a health on? I was just going to say, I've met you before. Yeah, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just wanted to say that you took me home school. I'm not really discouraged. I just thought you were going to have to talk to me. I was just wondering what your favorite Sailor Moon PSA was. Your favorite uh, PSA. So, the Sailor Moon oh, says, I said. Interesting. <laughs> My favorite thing was after we'd had a, a battle with this woman with um, torpedo <laughs> boobies. Um, <laughs> and you know, it was very exciting. And then at the end was Sailor Moon says brush your teeth. And just, <laughs> something completely oh, an out of odd pairing. This. An odd pairing. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I have an exact uh, favorite, but I do think I can tell the story of how those. Be uh, that came to be this in Sailor Moon PSAs is because because they had to do so much uh, editing and and um, how would you say uh, uh, when we couldn't we sh we couldn't show like certain things uh, nudity just, yes yeah. no nudity uh, but even like uh, if it was a kid riding a, a bike without a helmet they couldn't show that scene anything like that so they actually were down on time for network airwaves so they came up with the idea of doing uh, uh, the Sailor Moon PSA at the end to make up for the time of all the lost footage. So that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And I actually think it was kind of a neat thing. It also reminded me of like G.I. Joe, you know, and knowing is half the battle. But I, th I think I think it was kind of a happy accident in some ways, because it was kind of a neat little button at the end of the series. So that's, that's cool. I, I had heard that it was the... It, for the for the U.S. because they were skewed to a Y7 audience, that there was a requirement to have an educational component yeah. as well, um, and that was part of the reason. I mean, Animaniacs even did it, and it was very tongue in cheek. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's that's what I had heard. Yeah. But and they end up getting dropped later, so it's just like uh, we don't really care anymore. <laughs> very cool. Well, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much. Well, I guess you're stuck with me again. <laughs> oh jeez. So you guys mentioned, so you, you taught Susan, right? Yes. Yeah. So what's it like, uh, like being being directed by your, your students? By I my just... student, uh, well I just kept realizing how sort of hopeless I was frankly. I mean, she's incredibly together and she had a whole view of the character that helped me. Um, Susan is, is a really gifted voice actor and uh, when she was younger she actually had her own TV show. Oh, uh, is that Flappers? Yeah, something like that yeah. for her. Um, um, 
uh, she was discovered, as it were, um, and uh, she's such a lovely looking person. I mean, she has everything going for her, but really pretty early on she decided she would prefer to do voice. Yes. So that's what she's done all along, and she's, she knows so much about it, she's got wonderful attack. I can't remember, but I think I, think I remember a story about Susan, that she was in line, there was a, a role that I think was taken over by Michelle Pfeiffer, but it was, she actually had the role first, and she turned it down and Michelle took it. But I can't remember what it was, but it was a massive show. Oh, that doesn't I think. So, surprise me. Yeah, no, she was, yeah, Sailor Jupiter. I mean, she has such a unique voice. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. And uh, one of the things we always need when we're doing anime, doing voices, is attack. And when you say attack, you would think that might mean being aggressive, but it doesn't mean just a big sort of spurt of energy. Because you, even if you just say, I'm going sharpen or something, you can't say, I'm going sharpen. You know, you can't say, Oh, well, it's funny, when we did the dubbing for this, you have to realize, I, it's, it was kind of like a bit smaller screen than this, and it was words that would go by, and it would be written, right? And there would be a bar, and so if it said like, hey, meatball head, there would be a giant H first, uh, and then you'd, you'd follow it, and when it say the D for meatball head, that's when I knew to stop. But, but like Joe was saying, for those reactions and for all kind of the attacks and stuff, there would just sometimes be in brackets, react. But we didn't, we would do a cold read sometimes and say, do you want to just do a first pass? Like, yeah, I don't know, yeah, we'll just go for it cold, and if we have to go back, we'll go back. So we'd do the thing, you know, hey, me, Bill, hey, blah, 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 do all the things, and then there would be these reacts, and you'd kind of try to judge off what was going on, and I remember one time I went, ha ha, but I was getting stabbed, <laughs> right? And, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to round back and do that again, okay? Yep, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so it was it was interesting, so you would have some of those moments that were kind of fun because it would just kind of out of the pocket, just make you laugh, and you'd take a few seconds and try to gather yourself and go back to it, but, yeah. You know, the, the first time I did Rhythmo, um, it was, it's so odd because there can be sort of gaps because you've got to fit the flaps of the lips. And so the first time you did, I am... Uh, uh, you see, wow, I got it. I hit the, I hit the bar. Yeah, but you sounded ridiculous. <laughs> so what you got to do is, that's where the acting comes in, basically, is you know you've got to hit those horns, but you've got to somehow make it seem natural. The other thing being, I could never understand the calligraphers writing. As I said, I somehow didn't know Well, yeah, so sometimes it wasn't just our line. It would be maybe six or seven different or sentences, yeah. and it, yours would be just a different color. So if you're dyslexic like I am and a little bit uh, bad, I was really bad at reading back then, and I was absolutely terrified to do the job. So you're just trying to keep on that line and try to keep everything kind of... Uh, Coordinated. It was very. It was. It took about six episodes for me to get get used to. It, it was wow, like driving a standard you. car. You know, the first few times, like, er, 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 it just grinding gears. And because we, we were never we given the script. That's the thing. So you had to just go by what there was on the screen. And uh, it was all cold read, basically. Right? Good luck, because um, the producer didn't believe in it. And not having the script, which I, I think, think that's somebody who doesn't want to print the script. Exactly. Out. <laughs> I. It's like. What the heck am I doing now? I don't know. <laughs> Did you ever get a chance to like see some of like the original while you were working on it to it, kind of see what the interpretations In were? The art, anything? Yeah. I saw nothing. Oh. Did you see anything before? I, I know some some of the girls saw some of the artwork before working on it. I didn't see a thing. No, but I'm just thinking about when if you ever actually heard the voices when when you're doing rhythm, my, my problem was that my character just had such a high voice. I couldn't really tell that much about her. Yeah. And I she sounded very young, but then I was supposed to be victorious at the yeah. yeah, I had no reference. I had zero uh, visual reference. I didn't have... The only thing I heard was uh, the Reno Romano sentence that they had. Uh, and and uh, he has a... He's kind of... He has a very kind of a cool voice. And I, like, I felt like if I tried to do that, it felt a bit pushed. So I, I did what I thought was okay, and I really didn't think that I, I would get the role. Like, when I walked away, I thought, that was awful. Like, and it was back in the day when I was really hard on myself. I, I, to be honest, when uh, I, 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 I walked there, and, uh, no, I took the bus there, and I thought I did so bad that I, I punished myself by having to walk home. <laughs> because I was like, I'm my own boss, you didn't do good. Like, get, just, you gotta work better, and like, and you know, so, I was wrong. Sometimes you, you don't really know what you have. So we talked about the Sailor Moon sets, uh, segments. Yes. 
in his own way, tuxedo mask would up, up here and he'd make a speech. What did you think of those speeches? Like some of the things that you would have to say, like kind of weird and like... I loved it. I thought he was the, uh, he kind of, uh, uh, he was like the hang in there kitty poster of Sailor Moon, <laughs> right? Like everything was very, you know, believe in yourself, Sailor Moon. Yeah. I'm going to go now. <laughs> yeah, I, but I do remember the first time I saw uh, The Moonlight Night. Yeah. That was like, what the what? Yeah. Like, I'm, I think I was in like a desert and a tree and uh, like in an oasis. I was pretty, it was pretty interesting. I'm like, man, this guy, this guy's crazy. I like him. So I've also heard too that from some studios that they will, for some certain other characters and stuff, if, um, this comes from actually Funimation a while ago um, when I was talking to one of the representatives and she says, yeah, if we need someone to just come into a character, if they're just around the studio, we'll just grab them and say, hey, can you do these three lines? Did you guys do any other side characters in the series that you can remember? Uh, do you know... For me, I, I actually, I didn't, but it's funny. Someone just asked me uh, something, and I, I did years, okay. I was at a um, convention in Alabama, and we were signing for Sailor Moon, and some guy uh, put a Mega Man's Legend 2 disc in front of me. He said, hey, can you sign it? I'm like, sure. And I think you can tell by my reaction. He didn't, I was like, uh, well, you're in it. I'm like, I am? I'm like, and it was at the time when we were doing Sailor Moon, we were so busy, that there was a point where like, we would just, I would get roles kind of put in front of me, and I actually didn't know that I did this character. He goes, well, you're, you're a guy named Glide. And I'm like, seriously? I'm like, okay. I'm like, sure, I'll sign it. And it was the first time I ever signed Mega Man Legend 2. And, but that, that, that sometimes happens back in the day where they, they need just an interstitial character. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've done that a bunch where you, you'd be asked to do one or two things. Yes, but what they wouldn't let me do was be evil. I wanted so badly to be one of the really, especially the ones we got from I wanted to be, I just wanted to be so mean and evil and I don't know why people don't see me that way, but I never got to be. Did you? There's still time. But I was a witch in a movie, recently, but it took five and a half hours to put the makeup on and I was really glad because if it had taken half an hour, I would have been depressed. <laughs> I guess in some way too, though, in the series, you were Moonlight Night, which was a... That's right. Before. An alter ego, yes. An alter ego. Yes. And Luna P, Luna Ball, a little bit. You did a little bit of Luna Ball. I think it was your voice until... Yes, yes. but I don't remember in, in that series, as you said. I've done, in other series, I've done bits and pieces along the way as well, but not in, in Sailor Moon. No, no. Okay. no. Yeah, a lot of the times if you're doing like a, a, a principal role, they'll say, "Also, can you can we get yeah. you to do like guard number four? Yeah. Yeah. This, this, and that." This, I, I like that challenge because yeah. it is a challenge to, to disassociate yourself from the voice that they know you from. Uh, it's neat. Yeah, I, I think that was that's kind of a fun thing. But no, uh, tuxedo mask. I mean, I already had the Moonlight Night, Prince Darian, Darian, and yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is funny. Yeah, just different classes. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, Jill, for you, um, since you were on all four series, did you find it different um, in the dubbing process or, or just how things were run between when Deke did it for the first two seasons versus Cloverway for the, the third and fourth seasons? I'm just curious. Um, no. <laughs> I wasn't that, a, that aware. Okay. Um, no, I mean... The thing was, frankly, you know, once we got going, it sort of directed itself, it sort of was so natural. Um, uh, I mean, the person who really set the whole thing up was Tracy, um, who was the first Sailor Moon. Um, she also directed some of the shows, and she was... Tracy's the one that gave me the role, actually. Yeah, she, she was, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, she was very demanding, but she was right. And I just think she, she had a very clear view of where it was going, and I agree with that. At the time, I, I felt pretty tense, but um, so I think that she was really important, and then people who took over after that really had a pretty easy time, because it, it existed. We, we sort of knew where we were going. Um, but no, I wish I had seen a difference. Sorry, I didn't. Okay. Oh, no, it's fine. I was just curious if there was, like... What was the answer? They say sometimes different companies handle things No, No, I, I was I was just aware of the producer who was crazy. Um, but, I mean... Crazy We're all good. crazy. Crazy good. Crazy We're good. Crazy, crazy good. Yeah. Crazy good. Um, so I was much more aware of her and my relationship with her. I was just thinking about something else to say, just for a moment. I was just thinking about Hello Kitty and Karopi. And I was in both of them. I was Fifi in um, Hello Kitty, and I was Karopi. But what took off? 
Hello Kitty. <laughs> How often do you see a carope on a lap sound? A. But then you got to so meet. You got to meet. Did you have a secret rivalry with Karen Bernstein? No. Not. <laughs> no. So, so Luna versus Hello Kitty. I was so fond of Carope there. <laughs> Moving on. No, no, that's awesome. Yeah. We must digress. Yeah, who do you think yes. is better, Luna or, or Hello Kitty? I think Luna is more interesting. Luna's more interesting? No. She's got dance. <laughs> she's got, you know, a whole lot of things happening with her. Yeah. She can, you know, open a magical portal and just... <laughs> yeah. Don't even stop me on So you guys never got the chance to finish dubbing the last season of, of the series. It got a lot darker, um, a lot of stuff changed, and the villains were, were people that would have their star seat taken and they would be turned into a sailor, an evil sailor scout kind of thing. Um, some of them were really interesting. There was a guy that was a, an American football player. He became Sailor Guts, where he'd grab sweat from under his arms and throw it as a rubber. It was, it was pretty out there and stuff like that. But do you wish that you could have had a chance to work on the dub for that series, knowing like it kind of... Sure, of course. Yeah, it would have been very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Luna would have had a new kind of crush. Oh, like, she she has many possibilities, yes. <laughs> Um, I think what was interesting also is, is that some of the trans characters mm -hmm. yes. that were, we pretended were not, mm -hmm. or at least as well as and I think that's... Well, yeah, they didn't get to that season. Yeah. Like, they only, you know, like, more recently done it. When exactly, the yeah. Well, at the time... Um, at the time, people weren't ready no, for it. Weren't ready. No. Well, I remember the rumblings of them, uh, when, just before Viz kind of took over, I remember people saying, they're going to be redoing Sailor Moon, and all of us were asked, uh, you know, are you, you, you going to do it? Are you gonna, are you, would you voice it? And I'm like, of course I would if I was asked. For sure. I, I think I really feel like I would love to have done the full series, for sure. The two... Uh, the two the two uh, seasons I got to do was obviously enough to, to, to you know, be here, um, but it would have been really good to, to, you know, go on. However, you know, uh, Vincent Carraza, who passed on, is a good friend of mine uh, from way back in the day. He's an excellent guy, and uh, I thought he did a great job, as uh, Robbie Damon did, you know, the torch has been passed. And in fact, when we met the original cast, or when we met the Viz cast in... Um, 2015 LA Anime Expo, we did kind of a cast meet and they kind of took it on. I, I secretly, it was like a huge panel, probably 5,000 people, and I went kind of on my hands and knees and handed uh, Robbie Damon to Rose oh. and just took off. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I don't think he knew who I was at first. Uh, he was just like, okay, some weirdos give me a rose. That's cool. Uh, like, welcome. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it was a thing. And actually, I, I brought a rose here today. I, I, I would travel sometime with roses, uh, go into these things, and it would go through the airport scanner. And you know when they're like, you know, checking your bags for like nefarious things, like, eh, and you see a rose, eh, 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 and they like, look at me, rose, really? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So. Well, I happen to know, if, uh, I've ever seen a few panels with some of the biz cast as well. Amanda Miller, Sailor Jupiter. Oh, I met her. She's great. Yeah, she like she idolizes you guys as well, too. Um, she, she said that she got to hang out and uh, drink with Susan. And, you know, they had a really good time. Apparently, very similar person. Who has it? No, just drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. I'm... You know, the, obviously a lot of people uh, take umbrage with uh, how certain things were handled in the original, like the, yeah. the 90s stuff. But again, a different time, things weren't, people weren't ready for certain things. Mm -hmm. Sailor Uranus and Neptune are a couple. Yeah, yeah. censorship was a big problem. Well, it was just, a, it was very tight back yeah. then. It was still a very nanny state. We weren't allowed to so, show certain lifestyles, things, yeah. 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 But that has uh, since changed, which I think is great. And, but for what the show was, you know, all of us, many of us anyway, grew up on it, and it was just, it was such a magical time, and it was just great for everybody, and, and I'm just, I'm grateful any chance I get to meet and, and chat with you guys, and I'm sure everybody else here is as well, too, so, uh, but unfortunately, it's coming down to that time that we're going to have to say goodbye from the panel, I guys. think PJ Phil is next, from The Zone, he yes? Is, yeah. Is that right? I, I wonder where he could possibly Look at this be. guy, look at this guy! There he is! <laughs> I mean, PJ Phil, so. smell him from here, it's amazing! <laughs> Coming in with a superhero uh, <laughs> stance. <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> so you got to announce these guys back in the day on the zone. The Sailor Moon's up next, right? How how was that? Uh, Why don't you come here, up here? Phil. Come on up here. Come on, here. Phil. Oh, we're gonna have a fun. This is high action, everybody. 
Um, Sailor Moon was such a huge hit, and I have to tell you a little bit of a story. The guy who brought that into Canada, his name was Dale Taylor. He was our, uh, he was in charge of buying the shows. And I always asked him, how did you know Sailor Moon was going to be huge? And he said, I looked at it and I said, that one. Like that, like he's, <laughs> for some reason, he, and it was huge, right? You guys are, look at you, 35 years later, right? It's amazing. 85, 85, 85 years. 85 years later. Right. I got some grades too. But uh, Sailor Moon was a huge hit. You guys really helped make it for North America because, I mean, you guys are stars. You, you, you're all over the world, now, so that's great. And I'm proud, I'm proud to have uh, been a part of it. So, yeah, that I see you guys here, I'm proud to kind of be a side part of it. A side piece. Yeah, a side piece. I helped a bit. I saw you sneak in and I'm like, I don't know if I should say anything or just, but covertly. PJ Phil, everybody, he's going to be coming up next. Yes. More of our childhood. Awesome. Okay. And uh, so Jill and Toby are actually going to be signing autographs in about half an hour over in the autograph area there. Um, just a So $30 for an autograph and $40 with an autograph and a photo with them. So if you want to head over there, like half an hour gives you a chance to run to the washroom or whatever you need to. And then of course PJ Phil Guerrero is coming up next uh, in about half an hour as well too. So thank you guys so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having us. Thank you everybody for staying. This has been absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, thank thanks, Emily. And uh, come by my booth to, uh, to get free stickers and save the dates for Pretty Heroes next year.